Welcome, everyone. Let's get ready for some NBA basketball on 2K Sports. And tonight, we've got the Charlotte Hornets playing against the Boston Celtics. I'm Kevin Harlan, joined by the talented analyst tandem of Greg Anthony and Chris Weber. David Aldridge is on our sideline. D.A., it's all yours. Guys, Celtics coach Brad Stevens is known for his play calling. LeBron James said he has so many different wrinkles. You've got to keep your head on a swivel. He'll run something you've never seen before. But Stevens said, honest to God, I've stolen everything we've ever done from somebody else. Kevin? <laughs> I love his honesty. All right, thank you, D.A. Here we are in November, and let's see how things are going out east in the early season. You look at the Celtics. In the early season, they find themselves down in ninth place. And, of course, the Charlotte Hornets, three and a half back. And, and, you know, for Boston, they're one of those teams that hasn't quite figured it out this year. A lot of talent, a lot of heart, but nothing to put them up on that next level. Yeah, yeah they're kind of in that caught-in-the-middle type group. You know what I mean? <laughs> you wonder if they need a personnel change to get over the hump. And now the opening lineup for Boston. Tatum and Hayward make up the two forward spots. Walker and Brown, they're manning the backcourt. And it's Cantor in at the five, roaming the paint. And for the Hornets, Rozier and Monk, they're the backcourt. Zeller is out there with Hernan Gomez. And it's Washington in at the three, the small forward. And some teams have fancy dinners, guest speakers, and field trips. I mean, the Celtics culture is more straightforward. It's all about the work. Now, here's Walker. Shot from 16. A rebound by Washington. Now Rozier. The pass to Washington. That's good, and it's Rozier with the assist. And that work ethic, the core of the Celtics' value, are written on a big placard on their locker room wall. Yeah, it, it emphasizes unselfishness, execution, toughness, and hustle. Those are the values of their team. Walker, and oh, he blocked it and deflects off the backboard. First quarter just over a minute played. Monk, the pass to Zeller. Got a piece of it. Now, here's Brown. Tight defense on him. Can't connect from short range. A cold start for them. Three shots, three misses. Good thing is early. Rebounded by the Celtics. Getting their first look of the season at this Hornets team. And although they were the better team last year by overall record, this was a competitive matchup for them. Look at him turn on the Jets. I mean, Hayward is adept at finding the right spot in transition. The Hornets have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Zeller with it. Now defended by Hayward. And Zeller kicks to Rozier. It's a nice pass in here by Charlotte. Five on the clock. Charlotte needs to get a shot. Puts it up. And the shot clock expires. 24-second violation. And a chance now to see how teams are faring across the league. Here's the latest edition of the Power Rankings. You look at the Bucks. They're gaining on some of the teams above them, trying hard to crack into that top five. And I think for the Celtics, they're happy with this latest stretch of games. This is the time of year for optimism. At this point, anything is possible. Hayward against Hernan Gomez. Hayward goes in. Well, last season, Kevin, Gordon Hayward returning from that terrible leg injury. It took some time to find his bearings. He's working his way back to that elite level. The Celtics shooting their first free throws tonight. The first trip to the stripe in this one. Good on the free throw. 
There's been a lot of evolution to Hayward's game. I mean, during his career, I'm not sure too many people saw him becoming the terrific player he is today. And that one falls, and that puts him up by one point. Here in the first, just under two and a half minutes played so far. Monk, the best to Zeller. Now, here's Rogier. The floater, and the layup is good. And with the Celtics' depth on the wings, Chris, it was a little tricky getting Hayward back in there. Yeah, you have the young players ahead of schedule, Kevin. I mean, it's tough to give him minutes without hindering their growth. At the same time, Hayward an all-star before getting hurt. You want to help build back his confidence. So it's Boston now following the bucket by the Hornets. Six to shoot. That one drops for him. You know, some scouts thought Tatum had tunnel vision looking only for his own shot. But he's more about team. And here's Rogier. He brings it up for the Hornets. Feated by the Pacers in their last game. They'll try to put that one behind them. Live by the three, die by the three. If you're perimeter dependent, you don't really know game to game how it's going to go. Yeah, Greg, when you're not connecting from deep, you got to mix it up. I mean, look to score inside more. They didn't do enough for that. And, and once he got to the 10, I, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. <laughs> yeah, very little resistance. I mean, you had to bring much faster help than that. Walker finds Hayward. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. It goes on Cody Zeller. You talk about players that have transformed their bodies in the NBA. How about Gordon Hayward? Uh, has added muscle every year while maintaining that speed and agility. First one falls. You know, Greg, when he came into the league, Hayward looked so young. You almost don't recognize him now. I mean, the suit of armor from his time in the weight room and the hair looking sharp to match. Hayward hits them both. Looking at league trends, do you miss the physicality of years past, which was so much a part of the time that you play? I, I do, Kev. I, I do miss the, the physical game. I miss the bumping, the, the grinding outside in there in the paint. But I also love the new game and the spacing. You know, it, 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 you can appreciate the game so much more. It's like going to a ballet and being able to see the, the movement of the players, what they're doing out here. And so I love the fact it's not hampered by guys getting thrown to the floor and grabbed. Do like the physical play, though. I, I just want to find a happy medium. Charlotte in the lead. Inside. Here's Zeller. And the basket is good, and he's got a chance here for one more at the line. Now there's the high basketball IQ of Zeller. He knows he's going to get whacked, but he turns it into an am. And with Cody Zeller, he has a very workmanlike approach when he's on the floor. Yeah, Kevin, and, and that's what Zeller is all about, playing a simple meat and potatoes type game. I mean, what he does won't show up in the box score. But it'll show up in the stands. Yeah, and Brad Stevens credited for the culture he's helped establish in Boston. But last season, though, that took a hit. Now we'll see how he responds to that adversity. It's going to be interesting to see. Now, here's Walker. An 11-point game for him in the win against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. And he caused major problems with his defense as well. He had four steals by the time the game was over. And it's Washington missing. 
Chris, Coach Stevens was candid after last season. He said he could have done a better job finding that fit and holding a standard for the team. Well, well you like seeing that. Uh, if a coach has to hold his players accountable, then he must first hold himself accountable. And the front office was quick to dismiss that notion, but not uh, so many fans. Uh, there's no panic in Stevens, though. I like that. He's a steady hand through it all. And it's Rozier missing. Not the most productive quarter he'll ever have, but his shot selection. Oh, oh that yeah. was an impressive throw down. Yes. Woo. Uh, that's amazing, the creativity. And, and you see how fluid an athlete Tatum is. For Charlotte, they've gone just a shade under 50% from the field. Five of 11. Pass to Monk. To the inside, Washington. Can't hit that one. Great D that time from Tatum. Here's Brown, and Brown throws it down hard. Oh, you gotta love the explosiveness. Brown just eating up any lane to the basket he sees. Here's Rozier, 11 points last game. Pass to Monk. Pulls up from the corner, and Tatum pulls it down. Nobody even close to him, and he can't believe he doesn't knock it down. Cantor trying to free himself up. Walker's shot is off. Walker's gone one of four so far. Here's Washington, guarded by Tatum. Washington passes to Zeller. And it's good, two points. Zeller's got five now. And we've seen several lead changes tonight. Neither team giving an inch. Yeah, Greg, it's a seesaw battle. Both teams are pretty evenly matched, and the score reflects that. Now, here's Tatum. He picked up 15 points in their last win against Cleveland. Even a blind squirrel finds an acorn once in a while, right? I did not think that was going on. And the officials signal the backcourt violation. Not very careful there. Some changes for Charlotte. Yambo, he's checked in for Hernan Gomez. Kid Gilchrist comes in for Washington. And it's Batum in for Malik Monk. The Celtics also changing it up. Williams, he's checked in for Ennis Cantor. Daniel Tice comes in for Gordon Hayward. And Smart subbed in for Brown. Now here's Tatum. Out left to the wing. Here's Walker. Banked in off the glass. And the Celtics lead by two. Don't you love the passion Walker plays with? An incredible athlete who somehow muscles in tough shots. Rozier against Walker. And the basket by Rozier. Rozier's got the game tied up here for Charlotte. And they've done well at taking advantage of some late defensive rotations and getting the ball in the paint. The three from Tatum. Hornets with the rebound. Outside, Kid Gilchrist. Nice pass in here by Charlotte. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Daniel Titus. That is his first foul of the game. And some changes here for the Hornets. Williams comes in for Cody Zeller. And it's Miles Bridges in for Rozier. And a change for the Celtics. Brad Wanamaker is checked in for Walker. Here's Wanamaker, 14 points from him the last game against Cleveland. And equally spent as much energy on his D. I mean, four steals kind of tell the story. Tatum's shot is off. And it's Kid Gilchrist with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Hornets. Bridges. And he banks in the layup. And solid at just cutting through the defense. Give Bridges a lane, and he'll make you pay. Now here's Smart. He had 10 points in the win against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. And Wanamaker has it in the corner. Lock at six. Passes to Tatum. Unloads. Boston again missing. Oh, I thought that one was going to go down. The mid-range jumpers. Oh, man, that's usually a bunny with the D playing soft like that. Now here's Bridges. There's the pass to Kid Gilchrist. 
It's not going to go for him. Now Boston takes it the other way. Coming into this, having notched a win against Cleveland in their last game. And sometimes it's a lot harder to get easy looks on the road. But they found ways to get their guys good looks. And, and a lot of it is moving without the ball. When you do that, things tend to open up. Here's Batum. Really had an off game against the Pacers. Never really got into his rhythm. Kicks to Bridges. Pass to Kid Gilchrist. Back to Bridges. Moves back up. That's tipped. And they've come out with a take-no-prisoners approach on the glass here tonight, guys. Williams. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second-chance points. Yeah, hard trying to keep Williams off the boards. He makes it a mission to keep possessions alive. Batum with the ball. No points in the game yet for him. And it's out of bounds. The Celtics will take it the other way. Let's take a look at the numbers for Marcus Smart. How he performed last season. Was in at about nine points per. Four assists and three rebounds. When you have a shooter like him off the bench, it makes scoring so much easier for the bench. Yeah, when he's taking on the scorer's role for that second unit, then the others can go focus on what they naturally do best. Now here's Smart. Loads it up for Williams. Oh, nice look there from Smart. Finding the open man. Hornets trail by four. Fifty-three left in the first quarter. They could use a big shot here to get this offense going. Too many empty possessions. Right now, they need a basket. Outside, Williams. They get it back. And here's Boston. They're on a 14-6 run. Smart. It's good for his second make. He's made two or three so far. And this has been a great job of just getting into the middle of that defense and really scoring effectively from the paint. Charlotte shooting just about an even 40% to start. Yeah, and the Hornets, uh, they'll be one of the more disciplined teams you'll find in this league. I mean, they keep mistakes to a minimum on both sides of the ball. That's a big part of why the Hornets are tough to play. Now, here's Batum. Stolen by Smart. Here's Wanamaker. Good, and Smart gets the assist. And creating a little separation here gaining some confidence. Yeah, it feels like they're just one step ahead right now, looking to build out their advantage even further. And Chris, for the Hornets, as we know, their coach Borrego preaches preparation. Well, yeah, and it shows it up in the stats, Kevin. I mean, they're the best in taking care of the ball. The team does not take silly fouls on defense. They can go two for one. It's about being smart right now. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. And now it's a 10-point Celtic lead. Those defenders just look a little bit gassed. I mean, they're getting pushed around on that low block. Here's Charlotte. Batum scanning the floor. Outside Williams. 26 seconds left in the first. Five to shoot. Back to Batum. Shoots from 12. That one's no good. 0 of 1 to begin the game. And here is Tatum. Pass to Tice. And here's Smart. Top of the key, Wanamaker. To the middle. And he finishes it off with a one-handed jam. Excellent all-around performance so far. Hence the big lead. Yeah, Greg, they've come out of the gate strong at both ends of the floor. Just, just in total control so far. And so it's the Boston Celtics up by a dozen here at the end of the quarter. Their transition game has been in full effect. We come back right after this.
Gordon Hayward reunited with his college coach Brad Stevens. He said they go way back. Our relationship started when I was in high school. He came to my morning workouts and uh, really recruited me at Butler and was kind of the first guy that I think believed in me that I could make it to the next level. And I'm sure, Greg, that relationship played a big role in Hayward deciding to join the Boston Celtics. And not just a connection, but a respect. Hayward now a veteran in this league, while Stevens has moved into the conversation for one of the better young coaches in our league. And so far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in the second. And guys, we've seen the Celtics really take control here. You, you got to credit their defense, communicating, rotating, making plays on the ball. Well, no question. It's been stifling thus far, preventing that offense from establishing any kind of rhythm. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter of play on the court right now for the Celtics. They've got Smart, Tatum out there with Daniel Tice, and it's Poirier in at the center. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, Charlotte's had to wait a bit the last few years. Now, the city hosted the All-Star game last season, but for the Hornets, they've gone three seasons without a playoff appearance and 15 seasons without winning a playoff series. In that time, the franchise has had seven head coaches in a shifting front office. But Buzz City is hoping that its wait for playoff relevance will end soon. Kevin? We all want David, thank you. Boston leading by 14. Smart dishes to Tatum. Smart trying to break free. And Tatum with the basket on the assist from Smart. Tatum's got eight points. Moving it around. Eight of their last ten coming off assist. Second quarter of action. About a minute and a half played. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. And now look at Boston's upcoming schedule. On Saturday, they'll be matching up against DeMar DeRozan and the San Antonio Spurs. Then on Monday, they'll head home to take on the Dallas Mavericks. Now here's Batum. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. Kid Gilchrist looking around. Oh, and he plucks it off the glass. Wow. Smart against Bridges. Tatum passes to Tice. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. And it's Kid Gilchrist with the ball. He'll bring it up for the Charlotte Hornets. In the second quarter, held scoreless. He's dragged them down with his performance today. I mean, a whole lot of zeros from him on the stat sheet. Here's Smart. The teardrop falls in. He's got eight. Oh, he's got that touch. I mean, in between Smart with the ability to lay it up there soft. Hornets trail by 18. And after signing a four-year, $52 million contract extension, Marcus Smart rewarded the Celtics, Chris, with the best season of his young career. Yeah, his best shooting percentage is by far. I mean, add in his continued progress as a playmaker. Don't forget, he's the man on the defensive end. I think that's money well spent for Boston. Here's Tice. Oh, and that one, no question, powered it down. He is a fantastic athlete for a power forward. Whatever he lacks in height, he makes up for with hops. And now the first timeout called here for the Hornets. And, and with all their rangy wing defenders, the Celtics are well suited for the modern game. Oh, yeah, they make it tough for opponents to get clean looks on the perimeter, uh, GA, with their defense. I mean, it's a strong defensive team also because of the competitors that they possess. So a whole new group on the floor now for Charlotte. So Boston going with almost an entire new group. Cantor is checked in for Daniel Tice. Gordon Hayward comes in for Tatum. Brown is checked in for Marcus Smart. And Walker subbed in for Brad Wanamaker. Now here's Rogier. Got a hand on it. And they've only got a slight edge on the boards, but it, it just feels a lot bigger. Well-rounded effort, and, and they show no signs of letting up. Yeah, and it hasn't just been the offensive output. They're putting in the work at the defensive end as well. Hornets shooting 28%, a rocky, rocky performance for them offensively. Three, three, three. And a little under three and a half minutes elapsed in the second quarter of play. It's good. And with those points, 
He puts an end to that 10-0 run by Boston. Celtics leading by 20. Now Walker. Down low. Here's Poirier. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Zeller's got his fourth rebound in this one. Here's Washington. They grab their own miss. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Yeah, the defender all over him. The Hornets shooting their second and third free throws tonight. And they had a lot of success a season ago as a team, hitting about 80% of their free throws. And he knocks down the first one. Chris, this is a specialty of yours. Which, which current bigs are, are best at finishing contested shots right at the rim? Oh, well, I'll tell you this. The best big in the league last year, averaging 17 points, scoring in the paint, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yes. I mean, he'll dunk on anybody. Move out the way he finishes. What about <laughs> Embiid inside? What about Gobert? What about Boogie Cousins? Should I continue? I can keep going because the big man is back, baby. Rozier against Walker to the wing on the left. Elbow shot. And that one hits back iron. Oh, you hate to let those easy chances slip through your fingers. Passes it to Monk. And Hayward with the block. A rare block shot by Gordon Hayward. He has the instincts to do more of this, but neither the suddenness nor the strength. Here's Cantor. And denied. He sends it right off the glass. Here's Washington, defended by Hayward, and there's the call on Gordon Hayward. That's foul number two for him. That's number two on him already, a third foul before the half, and he may be grabbing some pie. Here's Washington, defended by Hayward, and foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. And the Charlotte franchise has been stuck in the middle for so long with Kemba Walker leaving this summer in free agency, Greg. Is it time for them to hit the reset button? A rebuild does seem in order. I'm not sure they have the stomach for it, but they need to tear it down to the studs and, and start over. Celtics leading by 16. Here's Walker. He kicks it to Hayward. Back to Walker. And there's the pass to Hayward. Shot clock at five. Wants to get it to Zeller and does. Four on three break. Monk with the ball. He's picked up by Walker. It's deflected. Rogier with the steal. And even three on three break. Here's Washington. That's good, and it's Rozier with the assist. Rozier's got three assists in the game. Now, here's Walker. Hayward kicks to Walker. Shot clock at six. Cams the 12-footer. Walker's got six. That's a good idea for Walker. Get the D thinking about a jump shot and open up the passing lanes. Rozier looking around. Pass to Zeller. Charlotte moving it around. Pass to Monk. A second chance effort, and the shot goes down. Martin Gomez has got four points this quarter. They are just killing him on the interior. And Walker's got the ball here for the Boston Celtics. Pass to Poirier. Back to Walker. Over in the corner, Brown. Kicks it to Cantor. Over Hernan Gomez. Misses off the right iron. And he did everything he could to make that shot as difficult as possible. Excellent D. Avoiding fouling and, and got in the perfect position to alter the shot. A nice shot by Zeller. Yeah, they're going to have a nice little run here. 
Boston leading by 12. Walker with it. He has six. Zeller grabs the board. Zeller's got rebound number seven for him tonight. Brown against Rogier. The pass to Washington. They get it again. And it's out of bounds. The Hornets able to retain possession here. A moment here to look at some numbers for Gordon Hayward. Some last season stats for him. Last season chipped in 11 points per game. Four rebounds and three assists. He's been making the right decisions and, and letting the game come to him. Solid play all around. Yeah, G.A., I like it because he's not overcomplicating things. I mean, he's just playing to his strengths and taking what the defense gives him. Now, here's Cantor. Nine-point game is last outing. He kicks to Walker. Over Rozier. Walker's shot is off. He's been off the mark, but somehow he hasn't held him back as a team. Long for three. Rebound Boston. If his performance this quarter is any indication, I don't think he's the one who's going to let them out of the hole. Hey, yo, right here. Walker the pass to Poirier. Now here's Cantor. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Out of play rejections in uh, the playoffs last year. Back the highest in three decades. Seems like tensions, as with the officials, are still escalating. Well, yeah, uh, the relationship between the players and the referees, uh, you know, it's always an ongoing process. And, and it's definitely getting better. But last year we had the uh, highest number of new referees uh, in the history of the NBA. And so you're going to have a growing pains when you have younger guys and, and understanding the culture of the league. But I like the way that we're going. And uh, some of those rejections were warranted. Some of them weren't. I just look at that year as, ah, uh, that just happened. Let's see what happens. I'm not going to hold players and referees accountable to last season. I think we need a little bit more context before uh, we make a decision on player rejections and flagrants and things like that. Just a little more research. And the Hornets making a change here. Bridges checks in. He's perfect from the line this time. Yeah, first year uh, for Coach Perego uh, as a head coach, but he had a solid start. He's uh, from the Popovich coaching tree. Uh, he was given the reins of the Hornets, and he was tasked with improving their offense. Celtics leading by 14. On its way from Hayward for two. And Rogier pulls it down. Rogier's got four rebounds in this game. Washington. Rebound, Boston. And with Borrego as coach, offense certainly was more fluid. Yeah, Borrego, he, he stresses ball movement. He encourages his players to look for early offense, more spacing in the system that benefits the whole roster. No, he just caught the defense napping. He shoots a very high percentage from three-point range when there's no hand in his face. Rozier against Walker. And here is Rozier. He has six. Looking to get back on track here. And one of those little spark plug guys, Terry Rozier, plays the game with, a, Greg, I think a chip on his shoulder. I mean, the story goes, as a kid, when his temper flared, his mother would have to sit on him until he cooled down. He's learned to channel that fire and emotion into his game. free throw no good and a big summer for the Celtics some key decisions with multiple players hitting free agency yeah with some comments from players like Terry Rozier in the offseason you had a sense this roster could have a different look I mean now they're hoping the pieces fit and players can buy in with their roles here's what Charlotte's going with right now the Ambo, he's checked in for Zeller Williams comes in for Hernan Gomez and it's Kid Gilchrist in for Washington and the Hornets as a franchise trying to figure out their direction. 
Yeah, the team was torn on whether to rebuild or go for the playoffs. The fan base, well, they were split as well on what to do. I mean, it's, it's been this way for years. Team is just stuck in the middle. Smart, and two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. Very rare for players to be elite defenders from the moment they set foot in the NBA, but that was the case for Marcus Smart. A, a tremendous physicality to go with a pit bull disposition has made him downright scary at times at that end of the floor. And that one falls for Smart. You know, Greg, defense are given for Marcus Smart. The growth necessary for him has been at the offensive end. And now, finally making progress as a three-point shooter. I had already made strides with his passing. He's becoming quite the two-way player. Austin making a switch here. Tatum's checked in. And so, Smart nails both of them. No wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. Rogier kicks to Kid Gilchrist. Pass to Bridges. Some nice pass in here by Charlotte. And Boston with the rebound. Tice has got rebound number five here tonight. Tatum passes to Williams. Oh, and the jam by Williams. You know, something that Williams does so well as soon as he has inside position, he, he just goes for the finish. Hornets trail by 20. Now Rozier. At the top of the key, Bridges. Here's Rozier. Seven points in the game. Right side, Kid Gilchrist. Williams for three. Rebounded by Smart. And here's Boston. They're on a nine to one run right now. Here's Wanamaker. And Rogier pulls it down. That's not the type of opportunity he fails to convert very often. Bridges passes to Kid Gilchrist. He gets that one. Williams has got his first bucket in this one. That's the awareness that Kid Gilchrist has out there. Excellent at knowing where the open man is. Outside Tatum. Pass to Tice. Over in the corner, Williams. And stolen by Biombo. Out to the right wing. Here's Rogier. Yes, it's good. Good for basket number four. He's now four for ten. Oh, perfect timing there to knock down the teardrop. Wanamaker, the pass to Tatum. Outside, Williams. Now, here's Tice. He's guarded by Williams. And two shots coming up at the line as he gets fouled on the shot. Oh, well, that's three straight German League titles for Daniel Tice. I mean, before he made his NBA debut at the age of 24, he's an athletic two-way player. He's shown he belongs. He misses the free throw. Nicholas Batum. He's checked in for Rozier. Boston also with the sub. Walker's checked in for Brad Wanamaker. He's good on the second. And here are the Hornets now. 17-point game. There's 31 seconds left to play here in the half. On the wing, Williams. There's the dish to Kid Gilchrist. 
just five on the clock. Shoots a fader. Rebound by Williams. Williams has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. He's lost it in this quarter, no doubt about it. Nothing seems to be going for him. Passes it to Bridges. That will count. And no good on the last second attempt this time. Coming out of college, Tatum showed inconsistent intensity on defense, but he's made great strides in that area. And so it's the Boston Celtics out in front by 17 points at the end of the quarter. And it's been their rugged defense setting the tone. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks, Kevin. Coach, you're in a good position here at the break. What do you tell your team to make sure they don't let up? Well, I don't think it's about letting up or playing better. Or it's just playing the right way. We just have to play good basketball. And we talked about it before the game. That's our goal going into the game. That doesn't change no matter what the score is. So that'll be the discussion at halftime. Thanks very much, Coach. Back to you. Thank you, David, for that interview. And we'll see you back here after the break for third quarter basketball. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, everybody. So far, a pretty uh, lopsided game, but still one half to play. I'm Ernie Johnson, joined by Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. Out in front of the half is Boston. They are way out in front, leading by 17. Kenny, what did you see from them? Well, the bench came in and helped them run away with this one. Tremendous job of getting loose, getting open, and drilling shots. You always want that spark off the bench, and these guys delivered. Shaq. Let's get your insight on Charlotte. Not pretty to watch how they get torched in the low post, Ernie. When they were playing defense in the post, you know me, Ernie. Barbecue chicken alert, barbecue chicken alert. This team is going to have to up the pressure, play more physical in the second half, start a fight, throw some bowls, let's go. And that's a wrap. With the third quarter approaching, we now send you back to Kevin and the crew. And with the second half upon us, we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be. And you know, Marcus Smart has been really making it happen, guys. Well, uh, he was putting on a passing clinic in that first half, set up a lot of their makes. Yeah, Jay, he was very creative in how he orchestrated their offense. And here's Rogier. He brings it up for the Hornets. Trailing by 17. Following this one, they get to host the Pelicans. That game will conclude a three-game homestand. Rozier and Monk, they're the backcourt. Hernan Gomez out there with Washington. And it's Zeller in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. So that's the lineup for Charlotte. And it's Rozier missing. Boston leading by 17. Here's Hayward. And Hayward with the stuff. There's the athleticism. Hayward, <laughs> he's proven he can get up and finish with power. And so it's Charlotte with it. Now, here's Rogier. Monk with the ball, and Tatum over to help. Monk kicks to Zeller. Rogier against Brown, just four to shoot. From deep three-point range, offensive rebound. It's good on the putback. And the work ethic of Zeller. Now that's what makes him dangerous when scoping out opportunities on the offensive glass. Here in this third quarter, just over a minute play. And play stops. Whistle on what looks to be an illegal screen. A moment now to see the numbers for Cantor. Last year, getting it done. 14th in rebounding. And he was in the top 20 in field goal percentage, able to create offense with tremendous efficiency. And we talked about how strong he was on the boards, going hard at it at both ends last year, really helping out his team. Here's Walker after the basket by Charlotte. Up top, Brown. Rogier with the steal. And now here's Rogier, the fast break chance. In the corner, it's Monk. Back to Rozier. 
over Walker. And Charlotte again with the bucket. Now that was pretty. A beautiful move to set up that jump shot. Hayward at the elbow. Brown wide open. He fires. It's good from long range. Brown's got his third basket of the night. Well, how about the quickness of that release? Brown just training that catch-and-shoot jumper with ease. To the wing right side. It's a nice pass in here by Charlotte. Hayward against Rogier. Back to Hernan Gomez. Shoots over Walker. Hernan Gomez, no good. Boston leading by 16. Hayward dishes to Walker. The Hornets pull it in. Washington's got his fourth rebound in this one. Monk with the ball, picked up by Brown. The shot by Monk is no good. It's almost like he's trying to make things hard on himself. You know, he's just got to slow the game down, try to get some easy ones. The pass to Rozier. And stolen by Tatum. Brown inside. The Hornets pull it in. And here is Rozier. 11 points in the game. Here's the teardrop. He gets it in there. Rozier's got 13. A little under two and a half minutes off the clock now here in the third. For so long, the Hornets have been a perimeter-oriented team. Chris, now they need to find an impact big man. Yeah, well, G.A., remember, they did have a couple of good years with Al Jefferson, where he was a force inside. But that was the last time the team made the playoffs. More balance in their attack would do wonders for this offense. Now, here's Rogier After Ennis Cantor's miss, Zeller passes to Washington. Misses the wing, J. Celtics leading by 14. Here's Brown, and Brown throws it down hard. You can't leave guys open around Walker, I'll tell you that. He, he sees when the defense is overcommitted. And so it's Charlotte with it. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, they've gone a long time without a bucket. Now Monk. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Six on the shot clock. Rozier the pass to Zeller. And Cantor pulls it down. Cantor's got seven rebounds in the game. Walker dishes to Hayward. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. And it's nine points for Gordon Hayward. The assist totals, Kevin, just continue to grow. They're way ahead in that category. Ball movement has been flawless. Ron Gomez down low. Bended by Hayward. Here's Rogier. 13 points in the game. Brown outside. Here's Hayward to the left wing. Walker finds Hayward. And a miss there on the triple. Oh, man, you know he'd love to have that one over. Here's Washington. Sweet little floater. Washington's got his third bucket of the night. Oh, man, elevating his passing ability. Dimes like this from Rozier help him establish chemistry with his guys. Walker the pass to Hayward. Back to Walker. Score the basket is fifth of the game. He's missed six shots against those five makes. And they're passing the ball very crisply here. Hornets trail by 18. Here's Rozier. It doesn't go for him. Hayward with some nice D. Here's Tatum, and slam dunk by Tatum. Wow, I I'm more impressed by Tatum every time I watch him. That's a veteran's move. Charlotte's gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. Get there, get there. Get There's the double team with Walker, and it's blocked. 
Here's Brown. The shot, no good. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. Now, here's Monk. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Here's Hayward. A rebound by Washington. Washington's got five rebounds tonight. Pass to Rozier. Pass to Monk. Shoots the three. That's good. And it's Rozier with the assist. Rozier's got six assists in the game. How about the quickness of that release by Monk? Uh, an experienced catch-and-shoot player who feels comfortable firing from deep. So the Celtics call timeout their first. The shoe culture becoming a bigger part of the game. Signature shoes, custom shoes, collections. P.J. Tucker with over 4,000 pairs of shoes. See, Weber, you a collector. I love it, and, and it's all because of the Jordan phenomenon, what Michael Jordan did for the game, not just with the shoe, but what he did for the game and, and making it be so cool in the culture. I, I got to give uh, my boys in Michigan, I got to give us a little credit, too, uh, with what we did there, but the shoe game has definitely become something that's just crazy out of control. I love it, but no, yeah, I'm a little bit of a collector. <laughs> <laughs> now here's Kid Gilchrist. Following the miss by Kemba Walker. And it's Biombo with the jam. Strong move to the 10, trying to get his guys going. Hard not to get motivated, GA, right when your teammate makes that kind of play. Yeah, yeah, Kevin, you're right. They needed that. And I love that he just didn't settle for the lay-in. He had a nice open look right there. And that's 13 points for Jason Tatum. Well, his energy level has never dropped in this game. I mean, he's working his tail off. And the D struggling to keep up. Here's Bridges. Knocks it loose. Walker with it. Makes it off the glass. Walker's got four points in the quarter. Well, there you see there. This is what Walker's built to do. Score the basketball. He's having a terrific night. And it's Batum with the ball. Bringing it up for Charlotte to the paint. He's looking for Williams and finds him. Count that one. Oh, great flow to that possession. Two players totally in sync with each other. Well, Greg, this is the 15th season for the veteran Marvin Williams, a former number two overall pick back in 2005. And even though he has never been an all-star, Williams has always been a contributor to teams. Uh, still can give you good rebounding and scoring in a variety of roles. One shot. And that one falls for Williams. Well, the former Tar Heel Marvin Williams isn't a primary offensive weapon on this team, but he could chip in with some solid shooting when other options are taken away. Now, here's Tice. Five points in the game. Williams kicks to Walker. Down to five on the shot clock. Batum with the steal. And here is Bridges. It's blocked. Right side to Walker. Goes to the reverse layup and drops it in. Walker's got 15 points. MC Webb, as you mentioned, for Williams, he can shine if teams don't focus on him. Yeah, Kevin, and he's always had a smooth skill set near the basket. Solid enough shooter from range to make you pay if you leave him alone. Passes it to Bridges. Hey, Williams, Williams, Williams. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot too. Looking now at some numbers for Nicholas Batum. Last season's performance for him averaged about nine points per game, five rebounds, and three assists. Yeah, he's been making the right decisions and, and letting the game come to him. Solid play all around. Yeah, GA, I like it because he's not overcomplicating things. I mean, he's just playing to his strengths and taking what the defense gives him. That one is off. 
And for a player like Miles Bridges, the key, Chris, will be for him learning to play w without the ball. Yeah, well, he can finish. I mean, you saw that dunk in the dunk contest last year. But, but for him, Kevin, I mean, to be at his best, he needs to learn ways to get open and get looks at the rim in a consistent manner. And the second free throw, good. You know, uh, what I love about Bridges is, is just the all-around game. He scores, rebounds, passes, and defends well, too. Just an exciting young prospect. Now, here's Walker. 15 points in the game. It's smart with the drive. Yeah, and the Celtics had their issues last season, Kevin. But, but in the end, they lost to a super team. I mean, the East has just gotten better. Uh, led by Toronto uh, and the Bucks. Um, that, that's a big challenge for Boston. And that one falls for Smart. At six foot four, 220 pounds, Marcus Smart might be the most physically imposing point guard in the league, especially with this fiery approach to the game. And so he's able to get one of two. Hornets trail by 19. Here's Bridges. It's rebounded by Tice. Well, Chris, with LeBron going to the Lakers, many picked the Celtics to rule the East. Now that road is less certain. Oh, yeah, because the East has gotten good. Let's think about it. Philly, uh, Toronto, uh, the reigning champions. Also, it's just, you know, and don't forget about Boston. I mean, but they have the talent to play with anyone. Now it's a matter of maximizing that talent and becoming the best version of themselves. Celtics leading by 19. And Tatum the bucket on the assist from Smart. Smart's got his fourth assist in this one. Uh, refusing to let the defender alter his shot. Tatum's focus and drive is what helps him finish hard shots. Charlotte's gone into a slump here from three-point range, shooting just one of five here in the third. Hey, yo, yo, right here, right here. Bridges against Tatum. Outside Williams. And the pass to Kid Gilchrist. Clock is at three. Shoots over Walker. Charlotte no good that time either. And it's smart with the ball for the Celtics. And he's going up for the alley-oop. Oh, man, challenging the defense inside with the pass. That's just good ball move. We've got 113 left in the third quarter. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Smart against Batum. Back to Bridges. From deep. Rebounded by the Celtics. And maybe he thinks he has that type of range, but I'm not sure who'd agree with him. Yeah, not everyone has Steph Curry shooting ability. I, I'd be surprised. I, I, I'd be hurt if he tries another one like that. The Hornets really having a tough go right now. And Kemba Walker is going to pick up the foul. That'll be his second foul of the game. Charlotte making a switch here. Graham's checked in. Outside Batum. Softly drops in the floater. The long, slender body of Batum helping him right there. I mean, he's used all that athleticism to knock down the bucket. 
Now here's Tatum. 15 points in the game. 11 seconds left in the third. Six to shoot. Over to the left wing. Wide open look. And good. Got the friendly bounce off the right side of the rim. And so it's Boston. Holding a very comfortable 25-point lead as the quarter comes to a close. From the field, they have been outstanding. Amazing shooting. That's what has them headed to a blowout. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And let's take this opportunity now to show you our State Farm assist of the game. Yeah, an easy choice tonight. Look at the precision on this pass. Put it on a platter for him. Yeah, he put it on the platter, and it was served cold. Now, I love the poise, the decisiveness. This is how you run an offense. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. Boston's gone three of five from beyond the arc so far tonight. And a look at the five for the Celtics to start the fourth quarter. We've got Langford, also Williams out there, and it's Wanamaker in at the point. Edwards against Batum. And it's blocked. And Batoon has arms that go on forever and ever and ever, which is why he's so dangerous when it comes to shot block. Fires the three, and the three ball is good. He'll do some damage if they give him that shot. Don't give him a clean look. Get out there on him. Here's Wanamaker. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. That's on Marvin Williams. Clearly a foul. Yes, there is that transition from being a player to retirement. It can be a challenge for some. What were the keys that you found in succeeding at that? Well, well first, I think, is adjusting. Adjusting to the fact you don't have the same schedule. Uh, you, you don't have a physical release uh, that you used to have. Uh, you miss the locker room and the camaraderie with all the guys. And so you, you miss the culture. But secondly, I would say take all the lessons that you learned. And, and for me, this was big. Uh, from sports and, and use them in business. So uh, in business, I became a rookie in other areas. I found a Chris Mullen type in business. I found a Latrell Sprewell type, guys that would mentor you, guys that you would play on their team. Humble yourself, get back to it, get to practice, get to meetings early, uh, stay at practice late, stay at meetings uh, and be the last one uh, that leaves and just, just take the culture of basketball, infuse that athletic personality into the personality of whatever you go into next. And uh, you can use those tenants to have a, to have a wonderful retirement. And, and, and really enjoy it. So uh, for me, it, it's been awesome. And by the way, I've had twins, and so uh, since retiring, and, and that'll keep me uh, keep you just as busy as, as it was you were playing. So <laughs> you, you can find ways to keep that same lifestyle. That's right, and some sound advice too. <laughs> Washington, that's good. Yeah, coach's pet peeve there, no box out. Oh, it's simple. When you fail to put a body on someone, you're inviting a breakdown on the defensive glass. Here's Wanamaker. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. That one on Monk. And he makes the first. Chris, we read this the other day, the NBA announcing the development of the BAL, the Basketball African League. 
they feel there's a lot of untapped potential there. I, I would tend to agree. I'm so excited. I already put my name in the hat to go out there and work with and help develop oh, these kids. Oh, terrific. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, just think about this. You want to know what type of talent is out there? Um, let's just start with Akeem. <laughs> then we go to Matumbo and <laughs> Bede. He's from Cameroon. How about after the Kupo, who has Nigerian parents? Uh, uh, I, I mean, we, we can keep on going. How about Abaka help find Siakam? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. There's some talent out there, baby. And yes, I'm excited for the BAL, the Basketball Africa League. Africa, stand up, baby. And it's Brown missing. No one to blame on that one but himself. You get looks like that, you've got to take advantage. Smart against Batum. Pass to Washington. Off the mark there with the three point shot. And the call will be against Hernan Gomez. And that'll be his third foul so far. Terry Rozier's checked in for the Hornets. Kemba Walker is checked in for Boston. And here's Brown. He'll bring it up for the Boston Celtics. Now Walker. Pass to Cantor. Back to Walker. And he uses the glass on the layup. And although he's smaller, Walker doesn't fear going inside. I mean, he knows he can get his shot over anyone. We're in the fourth quarter here, just under two and a half minutes gone. Poke loose. That's going to be over and back, not watching for the line that time. And just a little too lax with that possession, and it cost him. Yeah, you got to be locked in at all times. Their inconsistent play is a big reason why they're losing. Brad Wanamaker is checked in for Boston. Outside, Smart. Kicks it to Cantor. Over Zeller. And another basket for Boston. Charlotte's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Now, here's Rogier. He's guarded closely. Here's Hernan Gomez. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. One negotiating concession the league wants from the Players Union. Prospect attendance, Chris, at the draft combine and team-wide access to player physicals. Well, this is a tough one because I don't think that a team that is not interested in you should have your physical. And uh, we all know that information is shared, and so it, it should be genuine in the teams that are truly interested. And so I understand agents holding back on that. Medical information is, is something very serious that just because you have an opportunity to be drafted, your, your information shouldn't be spread all across the world just because you're at a combine. It'll be interesting uh, to see how it plays out, but basically you just want a level playing field for, for everyone. And, and if we have that, it'll be better for everyone. That one is no good. And for Jalen Brown, part of the challenge last season, especially with the return of Gordon Hayward, was meeting the high expectations, Greg, in a reduced role. Competition for minutes, and then early on, he struggled. Uh, we all see the potential, but it's really about seizing the moment every time you're on the court. Now, here's Rogier. Not a lot of room. Here's Zeller, and the dunk by Zeller. Great game for him. Double, double down. 11 points and 11 rebounds. One of the more positive attributes of Zeller, the explosiveness to play above the rim on a regular basis. Now here's Brown to the middle. Here's Wanamaker. Good and smart gets the assist. Wanamaker's got six points in the quarter. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. For Charlotte, they've gone three of eight here in the fourth quarter. Got a piece of it. And a bit of a battle here for the ball. The official signals a jump ball here. And so it's Boston with it. The Celtics have gotten four of their six shots to fall so far here in the fourth. A pretty nice efficiency there. The shot by Monk is no good. His offense has been non-existent tonight. It's really hurting him. Smart deciding where to go with it. Hayward on the wing. 
and the NBA 2K League C-Web, the first eSport operated by a U.S. pro sport. And it's quickly growing. Do you throw down on the, on the sticks? Yeah, just a little announcement to all the GMs in the 2K League. I am available. I'm a free agent. I'm ready to go. I'm nice on the sticks. I can play career mode, team mode, one-on-one -on -one mode. Whatever you need from me, I am ready to go. But I love it, man. It's great to see people who love this game, whether it's virtual or real life. It, it, it's hoops, baby. So much fun. Wanamaker, the pass to Canter. Brown outside to the left side wing just five to shoot Hayward outside the tray it falls for his fifth field goal tonight now shooting five for eight a guy who's really improved as a three-point shooter that's taken Hayward's game to another level out of bounds. and that's out of bounds Charlotte will retain possession and the Hornets making a change here Graham's checked in Boston also with the sub Williams is checked in Here's Zeller. On its way from Monk for two. Keeps it alive. Oh, that's made a huge difference in this game, if you ask me. Their offensive rebounding has been sensational. And they've shown a little extra hustle on the offensive glass here in the second half. Second chance points are starting to add up for them, and they can use every one of them. Now here's Smart. Here's Williams. It's blocked. And registering one of the highest verticals at the NBA Combine, Zella can send your shot back. Miles Bridges, he's checked in for Malik Monk. Charlotte has gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Graham kicks to Zeller. Graham with the ball, now defended by Hayward. They get the rebound. Zeller fouled in the act of shooting, gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. Boxing out, getting fairly low for a seven-footer. Zeller doing all he can to maximize his productivity on the boards. Chris, it seems like some teams have been in rebuild mode for a long time. Is there a point at which the league should step in and, and maybe, I don't know, take over or, or give them guidance? You know, I, I really do. Um, and, and not because it's necessarily the fault of the team. Because, it, listen, it, it's, it's tough to win a championship. Uh, but to be a perennial bottom dweller basement dweller it's not good for the fans and fans like myself every year comes the first game we think hey we could win a championship we could do it but mm -hmm. you know our our thought process is not based in knowledge it's just based in our hope and will for the team so you definitely want to keep teams straight you want to keep them honest and and i think the league could find a way to step in but not step on the toes of ownership And so Graham will bring it up for the Charlotte Hornets. He kicks to Bridges. Good D by Williams. The defense ready for him on that possession. They had to be because he is so strong in the paint. You see how Hayward just made that pass? Uh, you got to say, uh, man, he's got some vision. Graham with the ball. The feed to Bridges. Nails the baby hook. Boston's gone four or six from outside the arc tonight. Here's Wanamaker. To the inside and stolen by Zeller. Here's Washington. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. That one on Smart. And with the likely return of prep to pro prospects, Chris, some have argued for a high school combine to help determine who's ready to make the leap and who isn't. Uh, I'm not really there with the high school combine. I, I still think that, you know, you still have a, a level of college or a level of professionalism that can happen after. And, and I don't believe until you're ready to be evaluated for the pros immediately uh, should you have that combine. Uh, your, your bodies are still growing. I, I talked to Jaron Jackson just yesterday, and he told me that he grew two inches over last summer. So hmm. I, I think it's a little unfair to judge these guys that early when their bodies uh, and mentality still, still has a lot of development left.
Bacon, he's checked in for Hernan Gomez. Langford's checked in for the Celtics. That one falls, so he hits both of them. Hey, Chris, for some guys, playing in their hometown is a dream. But there's also that added pressure, isn't there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, at least when you play away from home, uh, it's a little more quiet. You don't have to get as many tickets for the game. When I got a chance to play home in Detroit, it was one of the best moments of my life. And I thought to myself, this is a wonderful feeling, but could I have handled it for 15 years in my right. career? I, I don't know. That's 30 tickets a game. Oh, I, <laughs> I probably would have to go back into the NBA again just to pay for those tickets. But I tell you what, it's fun. And, and for me, a mama's boy, eating your mama's cooking before a game, it is never ever I've never had a better feeling before a game than eating her food I than bet. being able to go out and play I yeah. bet we throw good Langford and I just watched Romeo Langford and guys he looks the part in every way big smooth great change of direction and he can flat out score Martin's checked in for the Hornets And so he hits both. I'm talking about Langford's ability to put up points. He has that popular step back jumper, Greg, that's so difficult to defend. Yeah, and you immediately think of James Harden, but a lot of guys use that step back. The one thing Langford does well, he gets to the rim where he can use all that length. And Hayward with the stuff. Once Hayward gets downhill, it's over. Nice burst to the bucket. And here is Graham. Passes to Zeller. And the NBA is seeming to be at the crossroads of sports and fashion and, and Chris music. Do you think it's oh always Lord, been Kevin. this interwoven? Oh, Kevin, please. You see the outfits they're wearing now? Now I got to be like the I old do. buddy duddy, the old guy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Guys are basically coming into the game like... Did you turn on the lights before you got dressed in your closet? Yeah. I mean, I know it's fashion. I'm not speaking about any one guy, but wow. I'm telling you, they're taking fashion to another level. And even though I joke about it, it's always fun anticipating what type of outfit I want to see guys walk in. Especially, I mean, come on. I love their games. And then I look and I say, wow. They have to be confident on the court because they wore that to the game. Today. They're confident in life all around. Overall, right. <laughs> yeah. Charlotte has gone one of three from outside the arc since we've reached the fourth quarter. Now the pass to Bacon. Now Graham. Pocket six. In the corner, it's Bridges. Drains it from beyond the arc. And just a proven threat from beyond, and Bridges has a good feel for when to fire him from there. Now, here's Langford. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Zeller's got rebound number 13 with that last one. And that one falls for Graham. Hernan Gomez is checked in for Charlotte. Batum comes in for Bridges. The Celtics also changing it up. Williams, he's checked in for Williams. And it's Edwards in for Gordon Hayward. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. And along with the association, we've seen the growth of the G League, the WNBA, the 2K League. Chris, which of those have you followed the most? Well, first let me say I should have been drafted by the 2K League because I'm really not. Nice. Matter of fact, <laughs> anybody that's got the sound of my voice, I will beat you in the game that I'm talking on right now. But secondly, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> I love the WNBA from Lisa Leslie to Cheryl Swoops to my girl Candace Parker. Are you kidding me? The skill set of these ladies? Oh, they have game. And I can't say I follow one the most because even the G League and their all-star game I follow. Right now, it's a great time for hoops and all three of these leagues I'm in on. No, I tell you what, he earned his money on that foul.
And that one falls for Williams. So it's both teams making substitutions here. And Williams drops them both. And it's the Hornets with the ball. Rozier with the ball. Dishes it to Monk. Inside and stolen by Williams. Smart passes to Hayward. The shot off that time. 153 left to play here in the fourth. Out to the wing. Monk for three. He can't get that one to fall. Now Boston takes it the other way. Here's Walker. With the G League growing by leaps and bounds, one is now being brought to Mexico City, Chris. I mean, first of all, Let's go back to last season. Did you see how crazy those fans were in Jurassic Park in Toronto? Yeah, they love it. Can you imagine Mexico? Oh, my They'll God. Love it. This you would be believe great. It. Mexico City, yeah. Let's bring everyone in, all the fans here. And what I really love is that it's for the home fan base. So when I think of the Toronto Raptors, I think about the city of Toronto. I think about Canada and how it's theirs. And even though we're one league, that team is theirs, and they take that pride on, and it just brings so much more excitement. Can you imagine all the people in Mexico City being excited for their team? Oh, I want to be at one of the first games when that happens because I know the crowd is going to be sick. It's going to be crazy. I want to be there. And here's Rogier. He brings it up for the Charlotte Hornets. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the Celtics. This was a team performing to its uh, fullest capability. Uh, a, a hugely satisfying win. A, a, a game that not many will soon forget. And on the other side, one that I, I think most will try to forget. And during the long NBA season, each contest important here tonight, tonight's win will give them four on the season. And, and once it becomes official, this win gives them a nice confidence boost against this team. They'll face them twice more this season. A very solid win indeed. And when you check out the box score, there were some great numbers for Jason Tatum. Wow, he owned this game. He never stopped working. He did it all for them. And you can't help but admire that kind of effort. The first free throw is good. The younger brother of Tyler Zeller and former son's big man Luke Zeller. Cody has a good chance to be the best of all three. The Celtics making a switch here. Daniel Tice is checked in for Hayward. Langford comes in for Tatum. Edwards, he's checked in for Marcus Smart. And Brad Wanamaker subbed in for Kemba Walker. Boston's gone 4-6 from outside the arc tonight. Here's Wanamaker. Williams with a clean look. And it's off from three-point range. And here's Charlotte. They're on a 12-4 run. Pass to Bacon. Now Graham. Four on the shot clock. The fadeaway. The shot by Zeller, no good. And here's Langford. And Wanamaker has it in the corner. Pass to Langford. Back to Wanamaker. No good there. See, that's a good thing about Zeller's defense. He doesn't gamble or bite on fakes easily. And so it's Boston easily grabbing this one. This crowd was stunned by the manner in which their team was dismantled. You know what? Shocking. I don't care what the matchup is. You never expect a road team to come in and just cruise to the kind of win they did tonight. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Gordon, very nice win for you guys tonight. You know, just proud of the way we fought. We thought we shared the basketball pretty well tonight. Played pretty solid defense as well. Um, got the win, so. Great effort tonight, Gordon. Thanks very much. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA.
presented by 2K Sports. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening.